Hello everyone. In this video, we will watch the construction steps for F1 car as a part of our robotics construction level 2 course. We have a few learning objectives from this video and they are we are going to understand the Curio spark parts once again. We want to build our first twin motor vehicle. We want to understand how to move a twin motor vehicle. There are some differences in the way we handled the single motor vehicles and this twin motor vehicle. We will revise how the transmission of motion happens using gears and we will also revise the speed manipulation using gears. Let's start building our F1 car. In step 1, we have lots of parts here. We have C plate, two of them. We have one rectangular plate and two square plates. And we also have four L connectors. So we are joining these square plates and rectangular plates using L connectors here. So the first thing, take two C plates. Ensure that the slits are in this position. In front, you have these three holes and the flat sides are up. Take the rectangular plate, place it on these two C plates and take L connectors. Connect these rectangular plates and this C plate using this L connector here. The four of them connect at these four ends. Now ensure that they are connected very tightly and properly. Every side alignment should be proper. It should not be slanted, it should not be turned, it should be perfectly aligned. Edges should be parallel to each other. Once you have put those four L connectors and attached the rectangular plate and C plate together, then take the square plates. Observe the slit directions of the square plates. It is very, very important. If you see here, the vertical slits are at the rear. Here also vertical slits are at the rear. Attach them using four nut bolts. The bolts, if you see, the head is out, the tail is inside. Okay, that way we ensure that the bolts are not going to obstruct our rotating parts like wheel and gear, which we are going to put on this side in our next steps. We'll go to the next step. In step two, we are attaching the DC motor. Remove the screws of the DC motor and attach the motor shaft onto the DC motor. Once done. You need to insert this motor shaft through this third vertical slit here. First, second, third, third vertical slit. And the motor screws should be inserted from the third horizontal slit here. In our new kits, we have introduced visors. Please ensure that you put the visors and then put the screws. The visors will restrict the screws from passing through the slit through and through and damaging the slit. Put this motor on the other side as well, exactly in the same way. Motor shafts coming out of the third vertical slit. Motor screws to be connected into the third horizontal slit from bottom. Let's go to the next step. In this step, we are going to connect a double bar. There are two purposes of using this double bar here. One is looks. F1 cars, you have seen, they have spoilers at the rear end. So it looks like a spoiler. Second, these two square plates are tilted inwards. They are not exactly straight here. They are tilted inwards. By putting this double bar, we make them straight. While putting this double bar, first attach the L connectors at both ends of the double bar. Separately attach the double bar with two L connectors. You can see head is down and tail is up here. Here also you can see the tail up. So you connect two L connectors. Then this assembly of double bar and L connector insert it in between and from outside put this bolt which will connect the double bar to the square plate. Same way from here also from outside head inside tail. We will connect a nut and bolt and that will connect this double bar to the square plates and give a feel of spoiler. In our next step, we are going to connect these to single bars. Now here we have connected single bar only with one nut and bolt this side and same way one nut and bolt this side. Head 
is outside tail is inside you can see the nut here inside so that means head is outside where we have connected we have connected into the first vertical slit out of these three vertical slits first vertical slit here also first vertical slit and at top of the vertical slit the second end of this single bar if you see this will align with the hole of the C plate and that is what we want we will see what we are going to do with it in our next steps okay this is a very important step because there are lots of parts and we have to do it on both side on this side as well as this side so let's see what we have done this side and replicate the same thing on other side take one medium axle slide it through these holes you can see the third hole on the inside like here we have put hub so that the axle does not slide we have put a stopper for the axle and this side also we have put a hub now this hub has two usage one it stops the axial movement of the axle second this square plate is slightly not aligned with this flat surface of this c plate here it is slightly out with this hub now they become aligned next we have put a spacer then a small gear and then again a spacer now this assembly you will do it here if you see here hub the axle that side here is another hub and one spacer then finally a spacer again here on the motor shaft we have put one big gear before putting the big gear onto the motor shaft first put a spacer or a hub now you have to decide what you want a spacer or a hub you will decide that based on meshing of the gears the big gear and small gear their faces must be aligned so it might require one hub or one spacer you can check that out then we lock the gear using a hub here same assembly on the other side in this step we are doing assembly on right as well as left hand side we'll go to the next step now in step 6 we are putting the wheels wheels are put on the axles here if you see the flat side of the wheel is outside and the protruding side of the wheel is inside and then the wheel is locked with a hub same thing on this side as well in the front we have seen that the single bar slit was matching with this hole here we are putting the axle through the single bar slit and through the first hole and inside here we are putting a hub same onto this side as well a hub and then we'll put the wheel again the flat end of the wheel is outside the protruding end is inside and then we are locking it with another hub we'll move to step 7 in step 7 we are putting this rectangular plate now again there are two reasons why we are putting this rectangular plate one is obviously the looks this gives a look of a tapering front for a f1 car f1 cars are tapered in front second it adds weight in the front and that ensures that the f1 car is not going to rise when we are moving it on the ground otherwise all the weight of the motor so many gears is on the rear so there is a possibility that f1 car will raise from the front so to avoid that we have put this rectangular plate here now how to put it take the rectangular plate in your hand first we are not going to connect it to the c plates just in hand in hand use one 1 1.5 inch bolt on this end and 1.5 inch bolt on this end and tight it with the rectangular plate only the bolt is tightened with the rectangular plate only using a nut once that is done then this whole assembly which is the rectangular plate and the bolts will come and the bolts will slide into this slit here the last slit and the last slit here they will slide into that and from the bottom of this c plate we are going to put two more nuts one this side one this side but these nuts we are not going to tighten them completely but we are going to rotate them only seven to eight times so they will be approximately two millimeter from the end of the bolt 
they will not go complete inside they will only go 2 mm inside and that way this rectangular plate will slide in front and will give a tapering shape to our vehicle that completes the construction of f1 car now let's understand here we are using the big gear on to the motor and to the small gear we have attached wheel that means this gear when rotate once the small gear is going to rotate five times because the gear ratio this big gear has 60 teeth while the small gear has 12 teeth and the gear ratio is 5 is to 1 and hence this wheel is going to rotate five times faster than our motor speed and that gives the required speed to our f1 car f1 cars are supposed to be fast and that makes these f1 cars fast plus if you see the motors are attached at the top and the gears are below the gears also transmit the motion of the motor from this big gear to the small gear and from small gear to the wheel so the gears also help in transmission of the motion as well as increasing the speed now how to operate this we connect two wires to the two motors here and those two wires we connect into our curio spark remote control now in the remote control you see there are four buttons two on the right two on the left to take the vehicle forward or reverse we need to at a time press two buttons but diagonally opposite buttons which means if you are pressing the left hand side front button then you have to press the right hand side's rear button these two buttons pressed together will take the vehicle either forward or reverse so let's assume that they are taking it forward in that case to make it go reverse we will push the right hand side front button and the left hand side rear button together that will take the vehicle reverse now to turn yes we can turn this vehicle because we are using two motors all our vehicles which we made with using single motor they were going only in straight line path now this vehicle which we have made with two motors is able to turn and to turn it what we are going to do is we are going to press either both front buttons that is right and left side front buttons or right and left side rear button that will turn the vehicle right or left even you can press only single button to turn the vehicle pressing two buttons is going to turn the vehicle on the spot whereas pressing only one button is going to turn the vehicle just like making a circle observe this turning going forward going reverse understand it and enjoy operating this car so what we have learned in this video we have learned various curio spark parts once again we have understood about how to move a twin motor vehicle we need to press the diagonally opposite buttons and so on we have revised the transmission of motion using gears we have also revised the speed manipulation we get using the gears and we have built and tested our first twin motor vehicle so what are you waiting go and try your vehicle and come back for the next video